Hello and welcome to the beginner's guide to pre-painted figures. I'm making this video as the first in a series where I'm going to be going over all the different types and classifications of figures and because it is the absolute godly all-encompassing online database I'm going to be making these videos according to the classifications used on myfigurecollection.net. The purpose of these videos is to educate any beginner getting into figure collecting for the first time as it can be quite overwhelming with all the different terms and jargon used in the community. I know I'd have loved to watch a video like this when I first started researching the stuff I'd like to buy. So now with that said, I'm going to be starting off with some of the most common collectibles being pre-painted figures and giving you an explanation of what exactly this term means as well as going over some of the terms associated with these types of figures that you might be confused about. I'll also be giving you some recommendations based on any budget, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first question I'm going to be answering is what defines a pre-painted figure? Though it's going to be pretty obvious from the name, there's certain things people do get confused about pre-painted figures. Firstly, obviously these figures are pre-painted in the manufacturing process. Duh. The colour scheme is chosen and everything is painted and primed according to the design. The most common way of doing this in large quantities is after the initial prototype has been painted by an artist, the blueprint is then sent on to the manufacturing plant where the workers will use a variety of methods usually culminating in airbrushing and hand painting to finish the products. Also during the manufacturing process the parts of the figure are almost entirely assembled they might be broken into three or four main pieces, but the majority of the assembly is already finished. And so the second thing that defines pre-painted figures is they require minimum assembly. And that's why they are some of the most popular figures available. They really require minimum work and effort in comparison to something like a model kit, which can take several hours to piece together, or a garage kit, which you often have to glue and paint yourself, but more on those in another video. Now, something I've been seeing a lot of lately, which falls into a grey area, no pun intended, are these special colour versions, and that's literally what they're called, which is laughable because they really have anything but colour, but they are variants of pre-painted figures. I personally fail to see the appeal in these figures, but they must be selling because they just keep making them. And yes, they actually are painted, mostly with black and grey and white, creating this very noir, simplistic design. Originally, I thought these were for people who wanted to make their own colour schemes and customise their figures, which I'm sure can be done, but I'm not even sure if that's the main incentive with these figures. So as you can see, pre-painted figures can range from very bright and vibrant to literally monochrome as it's all in the buyer's personal taste. Another thing that defines a completed pre-painted figure and separates it from an action figure, and I know this is all very basic stuff, but for the most part, pre-painted figures are solid in their form and cannot articulate with balls and joints like an action figure or doll would. I was paralyzed! Oh! I was paralyzed! I was just paralyzed! Oh my God. I swear to God, I swear to God, I was just paralyzed! This is not good, this is not good, seriously! I was called the ambulance, I was just paralyzed! What they can sometimes have, however, is swappable parts and accessories like weapons or clothing. And these can come in many shapes or forms, only limited by your imagination. And just like these, there's plenty of other cool little bonuses these figures can have, like LED lights shining for effect or flashing out of the base and sounds, alternate facial expressions, swappable torsos and busts. I've seen figures where you press a button and they have an internal recording that plays or action sounds, so there's really a lot of different gimmicks that pre-painted figures can have without limitations. The next thing I want to talk about is materials. The most common material for figures to be made from is obviously plastic, it's cheap, durable, easy to paint and easy to work with. The most common plastics I've seen used in figures are PVC and ABS, and there's not really anything more you need to know about that, but most figures will be made from either one or both of these materials. Resin figures are also another popular choice that you might run into due to its accessibility, and there's one major thing to look out for if you ever decide to buy a resin figure. Resin is very fragile. From experience, if you drop a PVC figure, you have a good chance that that figure might survive. Resin, on the other hand, is a fool's chance. 
The appearance of resin is very unique and beautiful, but it's very delicate and small pieces can often break off extremely easily. So be very cautious when buying a resin figure if you have to get it shipped in the mail or when handling and moving them around because small impacts can be unforgiving. And the final material I'm going to be talking about is polystone, which is exclusively reserved for high-priced collector's items, often larger in scale, like those produced by First Four Figures and Prime One Studio. Polystone is resin combined with powdered stone additives to create a very heavy and delicate porcelain-like material. It's largely regarded as the finest material for its ability to capture minute details in the finished product and therefore commands a hefty price tag. If you're ever bold enough to own a polystone piece in your collection, just be aware that they are also extremely fragile and delicate, particularly in the smaller sections, and they are quite expensive. But don't let that deter you, there are often no finer pieces than those made from polystone. Next, I'm quickly going to go over some of the terms you might hear associated with pre-painted figures and explain what each of them means. I know it took me a little bit of trial and error to learn what a few of these mean, so hopefully I can give you guys a head start. First is the term scale. The scale of the figure refers to how tall the figure is in reference to the original height of the character. So for example, let's just say hypothetically Vegeta is 6 feet tall. A one for one scale figure of him would be six foot tall. A one half scale figure of him would be three feet tall. And a one third scale figure of him would be two feet tall and so on and so forth. It's most common to see figures at a one sixth, one seventh or one eighth scale, but they do come in all shapes and sizes above and below. Next is the term prize figure. A prize figure refers to anything that was available to win as a prize either through a contest like the Konami prize collection, a lottery system like Ichiban Kuji or from a UFO catcher or a crane game. These figures are often inexpensive but not always and can be purchased normally through many retailers. This one's pretty straightforward but I want to give a quick explanation of variants. Any two or more figures that use the same sculpt of the same character but have altering characteristics such as differing parts or alternate colour schemes are considered variants. Next is the definition of a statue, which is just another word for a figure. There's really no difference in terms of its definition. I find when a lot of people are referring to a statue, they are referring to a high quality piece made from resin or polystone. I mean, you wouldn't exactly refer to a Mario amiibo as a statue, but technically you could. The next term is cast off, which literally means you can take the clothes off, but only, and I can't stress this enough, if there's full bodily nudity. <laughs> so just always remember, if the pants who don't drop, it's not a cast off. Bootleg slash counterfeit figures. Unfortunately, someone has made an unholy bastard version of the figure you love, probably out of toothpicks and blue tack. This is someone copying the work of an official figure and passing it off as genuine. Which is different to unofficial and unlicensed figures. These figures are created without the permission of the property's right holder and are technically illegal to manufacture and sell. I made a whole video on the morality behind these type of figures before, so you can check that out. And finally, garage kit, which is a term I used earlier. I'm going to make a whole video on garage kits in the future, so I'll just give a quick explanation here. Garage kits are privately made figures that often require assembly and painting and are usually sold at conventions. Okay, so we're at the end of the video now, and as I promised, I'm going to give you guys some recommendations based on any budget and experience level. So firstly, let's talk about the inexpensive priced figures that are available. It's a common misconception that anime figure collecting has to be expensive. I'm including figures that are priced around 20 or $30 here, so hopefully those anyone can afford on a budget without breaking the bank. First recommendation is Ben Presto figures. Ben Presto have been making inexpensive figures for decades now and there's something for almost everyone. They're almost always making shonen figures for fans of shows like Dragon Ball Z, One Piece and Naruto, but they've branched out into many of the popular series like Code Geass, The Fate series, Monogatari, Madoka Magica, Gurren Lagann, there's way too many to name. I'm sure for someone just getting into the hobby who doesn't want to invest a ton of money, Ben Presto is a great place to start. 
Next, let's go middle range. You have a little bit more money you're willing to spend, but you just can't justify going in all the way just yet. Let's talk around the $50 to $70 range. A few years back, I would have recommended a series like Beach Queens from Wave, but since then the prices have increased. But instead of narrowing it down, my recommendation is actually going to be buying pre-owned figures. Why buy an expensive figure for full price when you can get it at a fraction of the cost in like new condition pre-owned? Many Japanese sites offer this option. For example, I got my Kanetsugu figure from Ulta pre-owned from Army Army, which retailed for over $100, and I got that for just $40 including postage. And that is Australian, so for those of you in the States, that's about 30 bucks. So definitely go pre-owned. Next, let's jump up to the expensive figures, 100 to 200. You've got the money, now let's get you an amazing piece with it. I'm going to keep it very vanilla here, but there's a good reason that Good Smile Company have been a powerhouse in the industry for over a decade. The quality of their figures is just amazing. They take my number one recommendation here. I guarantee you're going to find some amazing pieces with them if you start browsing their catalog. Just make sure to get in quick because they're often limited and a close second would have to be Kotobukiya's Bishoujo line. I just love how they represent popular characters from both Japanese and Western pop culture. The Marvel and DC Bishoujo in particular have been well respected in the Western collecting scene as well as all over the world. And I might as well throw in a bonus, so let's say everything I just threw at you scared you and you're ready to break out the goldies for some Macca's chips. And uh, Goldie is a $1 and a $2 coin for all of you that don't have them. Well, instead, save those coins because I'm gonna throw in some dirt cheap pre-painted figures, five to $19. You've seen them before, but by now there's at least one Funko Pop vinyl that anybody would appreciate. And if the big faces aren't really a thing, then you can always dial it down with an Amiibo from Nintendo. And finally, I'm going to conclude this video with the holy grails to any collection. These pieces are for only the most hardcore fans who have the most hardcore wallets. If you have the money and you're willing to spend three or even four figures on a statue, I've got three recommendations for figures retailing for about $400 and up. First is Sideshow Collectibles, an American manufacturer out of Texas. They pride themselves in their work's quality and they specialize in Western pop culture. Next would be First Four Figures. They're a company that have continually impressed me with their work and their customer feedback. They've made a lot of video game characters and branched out into Japanese anime as well. And finally is the Japanese Prime One Studio and here a plethora of amazing works from both Japanese and Western origin lies but the works command a hefty price tag with many recently retailing in the thousands of dollars. And that was all for this video guys, I hope I gave you a good in-depth guide to pre-painted figures and what you can get for certain budgets. This will be the first in a series of several beginner's guides to different types of figures, so I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one, and until then, <laughs> well, goodbye!